Robert Bastian here from Laryngopedia and Bastian Voice Institute. I want to talk to you about retrograde cricopharyngeus dysfunction, RCPD, or the no burp syndrome. It's a disorder of uh, inability to burp and a whole list of GI symptoms, gurgling that's uh, embarrassing, bloating, uh, abdominal distension very often, flatulence that's crazy, uh, nausea after eating, hic uh, painful hiccups, a feeling of inability to get a deep breath for mechanical reasons because you're so full of air. Uh, there's just a whole list, hypersalivation. So RCPD, uh, it's become a better known condition. <clears throat> and in webinars or emails or Q&A sessions, people often ask, what's the right dose? The sense that they have is that there's a best dose and that, that somebody should know what that best dose is. Well, I want to help you understand why it's difficult to answer that question, especially at present. Uh, let me do that first by taking you to this chart. This is the original uh, 51 people that were published in 2019. Uh, we started in 2015 and it took us a while. We were already at a few hundred, but we published the first 51 and noticed that all 51 couldn't burp. Uh, and after 50 units injected into the upper esophageal sphincter or cricopharyngeus muscle, all 51 could burp. 50 units worked for 100% of people. So uh, there was, of course, some nuance. Some people burped faster or sooner than others. Some burped uh, more fully than others. Some had a lot of micro burps. Uh, some had to work at it a little bit more than others, but you get a good a, a result in all, all 51 people. And I think we used 50 units for 200 or 250 people at the beginning, and it seemed to be working extremely well. But we then moved up to 75 units. Now, why did we do that? Well, let's go back to the 50 units. Uh, <clears throat> I'm using the yellow here to suggest that there's a group of people, and this is not quantitative, this is conceptual. I'm just trying to get an idea across. So in this 50 unit group, you have this group of people in yellow who could have done just fine with 35 or 25 or even 20 units. They burped so well with 50 that I'm pretty sure 25 would have done it for them. And uh, then you have a lot of people who burped sort of averagely, and then you have this small group who, who struggled a little bit. They just didn't burp as well as others. So that's why we moved up to 75 units. But the thing we have to know about this group, this isn't the recurrence group. This is the people who just don't burp quite as well as, as we would like. The reasons for that not burping as well are many. Uh, there is individual sensitivity to Botox. Botox has a very wide dose response curve. One person can require quite a bit more than another uh, for the same uh, result. We know that from use in the larynx, for example, and in other sites. So it could be dose, but it can also be targeting. The, the muscle is pretty easy to target in the majority of people, but there are some where it's a little bit of a struggle anatomically. And so that could be the reason and, and not the dose. We, we injected 100 units, but only 50 units of those 100 units got into to an effective place. That could be a small number of people. Uh, there are people who have different anatomy. There are people who I'm convinced their esophagus is so overstretched from the years of all of that, that back pressure that they just can't clamp very well. There are people who are less, less good at sort of inner mindfulness, that sort of communing with the series of sensations and finding the little, the little hook, the little toehold that allows them to facilitate, not to force the burping, but to kind of let the burping happen. I think some people are better at that. They find the chin tuck, the chin thrust, the lowered larynx, and, and so that can make a difference, not just the dose of the Botox. So as you increase the dose, you're gonna have a little bit more of that sort of weirdness at the beginning, and I think it becomes a point of diminishing return. So for us, uh, the, the, the last thousand, we're at 1200 February 2023, first couple hundred, 50 units, 
the last thousand were at 75 units. Now, what if somebody comes and says, hey, I've been reading on Reddit and other places, and, and could you please do 100 units? What would I answer? I'd say, absolutely, happy to do 100 units. I might give them a little summary of this discussion, but if they want 100 units, I have no problem with that because I don't know at that moment what that individual person's uh, responsiveness is going to be. Some people are very sensitive to Botox, and there is a small number of people who are less sensitive. So we have to decide where are we going to target so that we're not over-treating too many people. Uh, on a population basis, I think the idea is, yes, we are going to over-treat quite a few people on a population basis because we don't know who, who that, <coughs> pardon me, who that small group is who, who actually need a higher dose than the average. So there's our answer. But every clinic that's doing quite a bit of this will develop their own opinion about what the best initial dose is. So someone in, uh, in Italy or Alabama or, or Alaska or, or wherever, uh, they may say, well, based on our population, we think this is the best beginning dose. And so personally, I would probably go with that, whatever they say. Uh, but again, I'm open to negotiation. We use 75. I, we, we discuss in our group of three, uh, you know, and so if the three of us were to say, you know, we think we should go to 100, I think we would do that. But I think all three of us are pretty happy with 75 units. Well, I'm sorry I couldn't give you a more exact or scientific or definitive answer, but I'm hoping you see the the interplay of, of sensitivity to Botox, which is an individual, unpredictable thing. Uh, a football player might require a, a smaller dose than a 80-year-old, 90-pound uh, 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 person. Um, placement, uh, mindfulness, uh, practice, all of those things can make a difference. And so we just have to pick a dose for us, 75, uh, I'd say 75 or 100 are good doses, but for us it's 75. Well, there you have it. Uh, thank you for listening, and I hope it helps at least to give you a little context. Thank you.